There they are now. A charming and eccentric cast of characters. And his best friend among them is a bear named Winnie the Pooh, or Pooh for short. Together, they had many unusual adventures that all happened right here in the Hundred Acre Wood. Talk about uh, how you guys came on board, Winnie the Pooh, and what was the conversation, you know, to sort of start the, the whole process? It started with uh, Bob Iger and John Lasseter. Uh, mm. Bob Iger asked John to take a look at Winnie the Pooh, and uh, we didn't know what they were going to be, if they were going to be featurettes or mm. a movie or whatever. And there was the mandate to return it to its roots. And so we started just with the Milne stories. We read the books. Steve had read them as a kid and loved them. Uh, I was sort of fresh to them. I'd never read the books before. Mm. And uh, I was blown away by how uh, charming and witty and, and um, just uh, uh, irreverent and, and how it worked on so many different levels. Um, so I think we were very convinced that, that this was broad audience material. And so we also screened the old uh, the Disney featurettes. And um, so we, we sort of knew those were our roots. Those, that's what we're going to return to. What do you guys think you've brought and, and sort of changed that would be most apparent to someone who'd seen that film when they see this one? Hmm. Well, we went into this wanting to make sure that we were true to the spirit uh, and that we didn't do anything to the characters that would make people say, that's not how I remembered Rabbit hmm. or Piglet. So. It was really for us about taking what they were and holding on to that, protecting that, and then finding any ways that we could just stretch it a little bit more. Can we make Piglet a little even more, put him in situations where he's even more scared than usual? Can we make Rabbit even more of a control freak? Can we make Owl even more self-absorbed? Um, it was really about just gently stretching the boundaries of this world a bit more so that we could have more room for to just push the entertainment and make sure that everybody's laughing and having a good time with these characters. Can you talk about casting um, the voices for the film? Because you know, I I know Craig Ferguson's voice very well, mm -hmm. and uh, I I got out of the movie and someone said, you know, that was Craig Ferguson who you know did the owl, <laughs> and I was like, I didn't even recognize him. <laughs> I, I was just curious how how did how did you guys go forward with that process? Well, uh, as far as the casting of the movie goes, you know, we knew Pooh and and Tigger were locked, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this guy Jim Cummings actor named Jim Cummings does both those voices and has for 20 some odd years and he's fantastic I mean he, he can you know really channel the the original voices and, and he's actually made them his own as well and and it's just a terrific actor so those those were locked um, we looked at the at the cast and felt a couple characters we may be able to hmm. nudge a little bit and and that was owl and rabbit we felt um, there was a, there the base was comedic but again, we thought we could go a little further with it. And, and casting Craig, you know, we just made a list, and, and Craig was on the top of your list. You, you, Steve brought that up, and it was such a great idea. Um, because, the, you know, when he came in, you know, he, he added so much of his, his own insane personality to it. Uh, so Owl started being sort of the owl from the, from the old Winnie the Pooh films. But then Craig took it and made him more manic and, and, and kind of crazy. And Tom Kinney, on the other hand, with Rabbit, um, took, took the, the Rabbit of old, this sort of control freak, but was able to find little nuances in him uh, that actually warmed him up a little bit and made him a little bit more of an engaging character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we're very fortunate to, to have the cast we have. One of the funny things about the film, too, is because I, I think so many people haven't, you know, may, maybe not have seen the original and they'll see this. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, there's times from watching the movie and I'm like, is that Jim Carrey like doing the voice of Tigger? <laughs> it, if you watch, I, I don't know if you guys ever noticed this, but there's mannerisms that Jim Carrey does that are like so in that voice <laughs> and in the performance of it. I could see there, you know, Jim Carrey also has a, a sort of manic energy that yeah. Tigger has too. They both kind of bounce around the room. Yeah. And yeah, I, I could see it energy wise. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're very similar. I think a lot of people will be surprised unless they hear about it beforehand that Zoe Deschanel yeah. uh, sings on three songs yeah. in the movie. And how did she come to the project? Did you guys go to her? You know, how, what was that all about? Our uh, we have an amazing uh, music executive uh, or music department at, at our at our studio, and it was a suggestion from from them. They uh, came to us and said we were trying to solve the problem mm -hmm. of how do we how do we retain the Winnie the Pooh theme but make it something for today to make it for something that seems like you know it has relevance today, and uh, they said. You know, Zoe Deschanel, the actress, well, she's also a singer. She has a band. She writes songs. She's this accomplished musician. What about Zoe? And we thought, 
we listened to her music and we thought this sounds perfect because she has that great mix of of contemporary feel mm -hmm. but a, a such a heart and a charm and, and, and a warmth to her voice and to the music she and an innocence in a way to the music that she does um, and we brought her in and we uh, talked to her she was just over the moon about doing the movie <laughs> awesome. and uh, you know we we very quickly felt like we were on the same page with her in terms of how the song should sound um, and uh, and the rest is history Somewhere on 